This is Pastor Jess Strickland of Living Hope Church in Aloha, Oregon, which is in the Portland area. And I'm Matt Moult, and this is our very first video podcast we've ever done for learning to lead uh, the blog. And I'm so excited that you're watching this. And I wanted to take the opportunity, since you were going to be in town, we have you and your lovely wife here. Uh, they're going to be speaking at our church on Sunday, and by the time you see that, uh, you'll have already seen uh, the sermon probably online. But I wanted to take advantage of you being in our um, house and just videotape a little talk about some leadership things because you've taught me so much in my life and you've been a real mentor to me and a father in the faith to me and I'm so appreciative of that. And so, um, Jess, maybe you could tell them, uh, just talk to me about um, leadership and I wanted to ask you about the things that you do when it comes to leadership, especially for young leaders. What would be some key thoughts you would have for that just that young leaders should know, uh, anything on that kind of topic? Yeah. Um, well, Matt, first thing, I'm I'm real simple when it comes to leadership. I don't have deep principles. I'm not a guy that would read thousands of books on leadership, so I wouldn't be the guru that way. But there are some simple and basic things I do. First thing, um, I, I think connecting people, leaders, with the exact same tools that Jesus had is really important. So I try to emphasize that. The second thing that I try to emphasize is how we touch people, how we touch other leaders. So if a leader's going to lead, he's got to touch people in some way. So how does he, <laughs> yes, how does he touch them and effectively lead them? So that, that's just kind of a thought. Okay. And, then the, and then the third area, tone. I mean, we live in a country right now where leaders' tones are not good. If you lose your tone, you can lose everything. You can be a great leader, great ideas, not have a good tone and lose your influence. So I kind of just categor categorize everything under those three and I try to work with my leaders in those. So it's, it's, it's really, really quite simple. Okay, so when you talk about tools, what are the okay. tools that Jesus had that you would try to teach young leaders to have? Right, okay, so I think the tools are they're obvious and basic, but they're essential to be practiced. Obviously, uh, Jesus had presence. He had the presence of his Father. He walked with the Holy Spirit. He Sometimes I think we think of Jesus being God on earth. Now, he was God. I don't take away from that. But Scripture stresses his humanity. Because he was a human, he relied on the Holy Spirit the exact same way we're supposed to. So kind of my thought is sometimes people say, to you, well, I can't do that because I'm not God. Jesus was God. Not on earth. I mean, he was God. But he never appealed to that side of his nature. So who did he rely on? The Holy Spirit the presence of the Father. I see what the Father is doing. I hear what the Father is doing. So the first tool he had was simply that. Secondly, which is powerful, is prayer. He had the tool of prayer. So just leaders praying. I know none of these kind of deal with, with the disciplines of leadership, but they're important. Yeah. These tools, pray. be. Pr he had the word. So even uh, post-resurrection, when he was talking to the guys on the road to Emmaus, he went and said, this is about me. And he knew all about that. He knew on the cross what was going on. He could find himself personally in Scripture. And so he, he had the, the word. And the fourth tool we don't often think of, he had his team. So he had a, had a team of guys that, you know, they didn't do it so good on that night that he died. But he had a team of guys that he drew strength from. So I look at those tools and so encourage leaders, if you're going to be a good leader, use the same tools that mm -hmm. Jesus used. So that's, when I think of tools, those are the tools I think of. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about that first tool, the Holy Spirit. How can young leaders practice the presence of God in their life? Um, you mentioned uh, the other ones were um, prayer, uh, the Word of God, and being around a team. So but how, how does the, the presence of God, how can we actually practice that in our lives? Well, I, I, I think this is hard in our culture to grasp, but... The greatest thing we actually have to reach the world with is not our strengths. I, and this is where I, where I kind of struggle sometimes with leadership thoughts. If Jesus is going to be seen in my life, I've got to use my weakness for him to be seen. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm preaching something on Sunday morning and it's, it, and it's a great truth. If that doesn't come out of my weakness, in other words, if I, don't, if I cannot explain, if I cannot demonstrate somewhere in my life where I had a weakness, and this very place that I had a weakness, God's strength came streaming through. It's, it's kind of useless. So to me, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we're leaning into our weakness a little bit more. In other words, all the places where I'm thinking, I can't, I'm not very good, I, I'm leaning into the Holy Spirit. Because I, 
I just tend to believe in leaders' lives, God wants to do more miracles, more presence miracles, than we could ever imagine. So if you have anything that you think is a weakness in your life, in my mind, that's where we should expect God to do the most. Okay, I love that thought. I think that a lot of young leaders think that being vulnerable or be, being honest um, is like showing weakness or transparency but uh, or authenticity, but I don't think that equates necessarily to the weakness you're talking about, right? You're talking about like, man, if I'm just not good at something, that's the place where God can actually show up Absolutely. the strongest, not just like trying to be honest and tweet everything you feel, but you're talking about an actual weakness in your life. Yeah, I, I think we can kind of almost be self-pitying and I'm not good at this, not good at that. I'm not talking about that at mm -hmm. all. I'm just talking about where, where we know a place is ending in our life. Now, this would be real extreme. When we lost uh, our grandson a few years ago, I was at a place where I knew I was at my end. That was the place where Jesus picked up and went. And just for our uh, people watching, your grandson was how old at the time? Oh, well, three, four months when he died. He had about three, four months of just horrible life. And lots and lots of people were praying for this, believing for a miracle. It didn't happen. Right. And so you were at the end, and so you felt like Jesus stepped in. It's right where he stepped in. And there'd be other things. There are things that I'm not good at in ministry. But that doesn't bring an end to my life. That's actually when it gets really, really good because that's when the Holy Spirit will come in, provide other people, yeah. bring insights, do merit. Where God really shines is where I can't. And so mm -hmm. to me, leaning in on the Holy Spirit in those areas, that's, that's the key place to lean in. And then the other place is when you do have a strength, not counting on your gift, but really counting on the Holy Spirit using your gift. So I think this whole thing with the presence of God and leaning into the Holy Spirit, it, it has to be practiced, it needs to be intentional, it needs to be thought about all the time, because I'm just convinced through leadership, God wants to do far more than we can imagine just in, 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 in a natural way. I remember, uh, people won't know this, but you were one of my Bible college teachers, and I was always really fascinated with just your um, passion for the person of Jesus in your life, his presence. And I remember that we were trying to think of a word for that. And, and uh, we said, you're like a mystic. And he said, yeah, I think I am. Might be a mystic, like just the mystery, the spiritualness of Jesus being around. I've always appreciated yeah. about the, uh, that about you. Okay. So, uh, I want to just for time's sake, jump from tools to, uh, what was the second? Second one is touch. Touch. Okay. So I touched you as a joke, but like when you're talking to a leader, how does that practically work out? Like when you're, if you're going to mentor a young leader, do you actually say, let's talk about the, the touch or how, how does that okay. work itself out in somebody's life? I like, uh, Spader does this thing in his book where he talks about power. So let's, let's take power and kind of make a fist of it and then use that as an acronym. So I, I think there's five things you look at when you're, you're trying to, you're trying to touch a leader. So it would be, because I believe in personal discipleship. I think everyone has to have, we talked about that earlier, has a personal discipleship. Mm -hmm. So prayer, power, prayer. I, I think it's not just, you know, I'm gonna instruct you in a classroom how to pray. I think if you're gonna be good leaders, praying with other people. I think when somebody has a need, a leader should step up and say, can I pray for you? Yeah. I think a high school leader, one of the best things a high school leader could do is when the kid's all messing around and having trouble with something, say, hey, can I pray for you? Immediately that creates influence so so it's just not prayer but praying together right. praying for oh would be obedience so just taking a moment to talk to people how are you obeying god the word spending time reading scripture and discussing scripture together we do that mm -hmm. you know we'll talk about scripture together yeah. so i'm kind of going through these fast there's here's one e for exaltation i think guys should get in a car and sing together i think we need to we need we need to worship with in other words we need to kind of touch the raw essence of discipleship and then our mm -hmm. uh, relationships i had a guy the other day somebody uh, did something they were really mad they didn't want to forgive them i had to jump right in the middle of it and work through forgiveness if we lose forgiveness we lose everything so those are just kind of five things right there but when i'm talking about touch really touching uh people in a way where their life would want to <clears throat> excuse me want to change but being in there uh, with them on the issue. So when I'm talking about touch, it's talking about real practical levels and areas where we, we touch people. That's kind of a quick way to do yeah. it, but it's a, it's, in my mind, it's a good acronym. I think about that all the time. I love that. Uh, Pastor Bob McGregor used to say uh, the key word for Jesus' ministry was with, and so he was literally 
in touch reach with people. So I love those things that you mentioned. Okay, so you talked about tools and touch, and then the third word for you for leadership was tone. Tone. I and so we were talking in the car earlier um, uh, around dinner about just how even people on the news because they uh, say something uh, silly, they say something without a lot, uh, you know, without good tone. They've lost their job. Advertisers pull out. I think the same is true with church leaders. They can lose influence just like that. Not by what they say, by how they say it, or how they just uh, the way they look at people. Like things get taken on a very. Uh, so how do you coach tone, or like what do young leaders need to know about tone? Well, real simple things. Stay in your lane. <laughs> so know what you're called to do, and don't get out of that. If there are certain things people would like me to do. If I get out of what I'm called to do, I can say dumb things. I can get out of tone. I can get frustrated. I get it. It'd be like, hey, Jess, why don't you go be a worship leader? I'm going to have some bad tone there because I'm not going to do a very good job. Right. So just that's a simple thing. Just stay in the limp. The the second thing is stay in your love. Hmm. And um, I think by by staying in your love is by constantly forgiving people, believing in people. I think it like in leaders, when you, if I can find somebody I don't like, I don't love, probably shouldn't be a pastor. That's, that's not, you know, you're not cut out for that. You, th there should be just, you know, a, a constant loving nature that's in you. And then I, the last one is just an L. I, it's what I call stay in your look. And I think this is the most important thing. The Bible says the way you see it is the way you're going to get it. The way you hear it is the way you're going to get it. I, I think this whole thing of, of looking at things, and here, to me, I think this might be the most important principle of leadership. I, as a leader, if we're sitting in a room, and you and I are facing a problem right now, and I'm a leader, here's what leadership gets to do. I get to decide how big the problem is. And so when I'm looking at a problem, and I can get it down to a God-sized problem that he's able to handle through me, through us, or anything else, I'm looking at that right. All of a sudden, I'm probably going to get to inherit or get to receive how I look at it. So <clears throat> stay in your lane, love people, but the critical thing is how are you looking at every problem? How are you looking at every, every person? Get it down to a God-sized problem. Man, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so just a little bonus uh, question then related to that, the, uh, staying in your love lane. I think that uh, forgiving people is probably one of the hardest things to do. We did a survey with our church, and mm -hmm. that was one of the top things people want to know about is forgiveness. How often do you personally, nobody from your church is going to see this, so you're clear to be really honest here. <laughs> how many? How often do you think that you have to work on forgiving people? Like How common is that where something comes up and you kind of have to implement that in your life? Okay, now... You promise <laughs> no one in my church will ever see this. So this is this is just really cloistered. So I I'll, I'll have this. no control over the internet. Okay, well, I'll, I'll be honest. I think there's a verse that goes simply just like this, and it's a big verse to me. God in Christ forgiving the world. Now, here's how I translate that. Jesus even needed God in him providing power to forgive wow. the world. Yeah. So I'm thinking about that all the time. I cannot forgive anyone christ in me must do it so that's that's my first premise so i say that to answer the question this way probably every day maybe two or three times a day and here's why because somebody maybe did something to me three years ago and i haven't thought about it three years today i think about it so today again yeah. god in christ and i think it's probably daily because here's the prayer it says when you pray pray like this Father, yeah. forgive those who trespass against me as you have forgiven me. That's a daily prayer because right ahead of that says, give us this day our daily bread. I think we got to work through this every day. I'm, every day I, I'm pretty sure I have a sin in my life, and I'm pretty sure every day one of those sins in my life is to lean into lacking forgiveness. So to be honest with you, I think... There's hardly a day that has ever gone by that I've not had to appropriate forgiveness, even though I'd like to lie about it and pretend that nothing ever hurts me. Uh, yeah. I, th I think we all do get wounded and roughed up in life, and so God, so it's Jesus in Jess, forgiving the world, I think about that it. That actually gives me a lot of comfort <laughs> that you have to work really hard on that, because I have to work hard on that. I think uh -huh. all of our uh, people that are watching this do. Uh, okay, so when I'm reading a book, I want to highlight things. So I'm going to see if I can remember the stuff. We didn't practice this ahead of time, but... 
you said when you're working with young leaders, you try to work on their uh, their tone, which is what we just talked about. You try to work on their, um, oh man, the touch. touch. And then the first one is their uh, tool, tools. So the tools that Jesus had with, were the presence of God, the word of God, his team, prayer. And I love that. We can implement that in our life as leaders. And then when you talked about touch, it's the ability for us to literally be around people and, and really like being able to offer prayer and uh, to be able to really do things together with people, I think is a key thing for leaders. You don't lead from a blog. You lead when you're really with people. And then the uh, tone piece, how we say things, leading from our lane, staying in our lane, staying in our love, which is forgiveness, staying in our look, like how we perceive mm. things. I love that. Uh, I want to be like you when I grow up, and so that's great. So thanks, code word, bubbles. Bubbles, Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching Learning to Lead, our very first podcast with Pastor Jess Strickland.